I do not feel good. <laughs> and I have my window, like my, I have a sliding glass door and it's open so I'm sorry if it's loud and you can hear the road noise but I'm not closing it because it's kind of warm. <laughs> um, and I'm just feeling some like hardcore allergies lately. Like I have allergies year round but damn, these ones are really bad. Like I just feel awful. I am here to talk about my August wrap up. August actually went really well. I read a lot of books. I only have one book left on my summer TBR and technically summer doesn't end until almost the end of September. So I feel like I'm doing pretty good there and I'm actually currently reading it. So I feel like it could happen this time. <laughs> um, and I read like a nice variety of books too, which is I ended up reading 10 books. I did DNF one book, which when I get there, I'll talk about it a So the first book I bought, is, or I read, oh my gosh, is The Boy Most Likely To by Huntley Fitzpatrick. And I ended up giving this three stars, which potentially is a little generous. Considering how long it took me to read this, I feel like it may be a two star book. I don't know. The struggle is real. I loved My Life Next Door, and this is like a companion novel to that. Um, it stars Tim and Alice who show up in My Life Next Door. I just, I didn't, I couldn't really get invested in this. It took me a really long time to read it. And there's something that happens in here, like a plot point, like a big moment that I just felt didn't really add a lot to the story. Um, for me personally, and the resolution was kind of weird with it, so I don't know. Um, I will honestly probably end up getting rid of this, um, just because I don't see myself rereading it. And I so then I read Stolen Songbird by Danielle L. Jensen, and I read this as an ebook on Overdrive, and I had heard, um, Becca from like Becca Awesome Book Nut or Be a Book Nut or whatever her name is, I'm so sorry. She had talked about this book a couple of years ago, I think, and had really raved about it, and so it had always been in the back of my mind, but I was never able to get a hold of it, and I was too afraid to buy it. So I was, while well, my library doesn't carry it, the New York Public Library does, so I was able to get it through Overdrive for that. So I did read it. I gave it four stars. I did really enjoy it. I, uh, the words. <laughs> I do want to continue reading this series, but I'm not necessarily feeling like that huge pull to read it. Um, it's about, I don't really, I feel like it's, well it is fantasy, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to take place like in our world, like a semi-historical version or an alternative world, I'm, that I'm not 100% sure of. But it's this girl and she's on her way to live in a city to be a singer with her mom and she gets kidnapped and taken like underground into this troll kingdom and she ends up getting wrapped up in like troll politics and everything. Um, I enjoyed it. Saw the ending coming but I enjoyed it. And I was listening to Hidden Figures on audiobook through Overdrive, which I still haven't seen this movie and I'm really sad about it. So, um, I did end up giving this three stars. It was just a little, well I find the content fascinating and I do find these women very interesting. I just felt the content was a little dry and maybe reading it in a physical form would be easier for me because sometimes I had trouble keeping track of who we were talking about because it covers so many different women and so many other people who were involved in like, I can't remember what NASA was called, NASA was called before it was NASA, but um, because it mostly covers it before it was called NASA. But it is still really interesting and so yeah, I think maybe with a physical book I would have, because I can go back to in a physical book, it's not as easy as to do that in an audiobook, but it was still worth a read. And then I did DNF Dune, I think I was like 7,500 pages in when I decided to DNF this. I would consider this more like paused for now. DNF to me is like, I will not finish it, I will not pick it up again, no. This really just wasn't working for me right now. Now I do think it has some technical issues with it writing wise, but I can see myself in a different time 
being super into this book. So, so then I read Vision in Silver by Anne Bishop and unfortunately this did not get five stars. I know. It's tragedy. But it did get four. <laughs> um, this was just a little bit of a step down. I think Murder of Crows for me was just so good and so intense. It was kind of hard not to have this book be a little bit of a disappointment. Um, it was still a very good book. I'm still super excited to see what goes on with these characters. We meet more characters in here. We get to know more about some of the other characters we've known in the past. Still super invested in this story. Cannot wait to read the next one. So then I read Damaged Like Us by Krista and Becca Ritchie, which is a spin-off of sort of did slash Calloway Sisters series. This follows the okay, it follows the children in of those characters. However, I feel like it really just follows Moffy. Um, which is fine, but I don't know, for whatever reason, I was going into this thinking I was going to get three POVs, and those three POVs were going to be Moffy, Jane, and Sully, and that's not what I got. I got two POVs, Moffy, and a new character, Pharaoh, who is the love interest for Moffy, so it, I would say it is a male-male romance. When I saw the name Pharaoh, I thought it was a girl <laughs> before I kept reading and saw male gender pronouns. Um, so, but it is a male-male romance, which I'm fine with. It's cool. And Moffy is Lily and Lowe's oldest son, and he's also the oldest out of all of the gang. Now, Jane is his best friend, and so she does show up a lot, but she doesn't have, like, a POV or anything. And it looks like the next book is going to continue to follow Moffy and Pharaoh, so I don't really know what's going on from here, because I really want, I want to get in Jane's head, and I really want to get in, Jane, in Sully's head, and I'm very confused about where this series is going. <laughs> like, I thought I knew where it was going to go, and now I have no idea, which is fine. Perfectly fine. Um, I gave this four stars. Can't remember if I said that. I'm not sure I'm very coherent today or really giving you any information, but really, is that different from any of my other wrap-ups? I watch other people wrap up books and they're so, like, eloquent and, like, quick and mine are, like, super long and don't really have important information. <laughs> I don't know. But I did enjoy this the book. Um, I don't like it quite as much as I like the original series, but it's... I'm sure it'll grow on me, and I love being able to see the other characters that, like, I know and love as, like, super adults with kids and everything. It's weird, but it's cool. I read Twilight by Meg Cabot, which is the sixth book and technically the final book in the Mediator series, so expect a Mediator series review coming soon. I'm going to review the series, like, the six book series individually. I'm not going to include Remembrance or anything like that. Um, in it because that's more of like an adult novel I believe anyways um, so I gave this four stars this was probably one of the books I remembered the most there's something that happens in here that I remembered happening the whole series like it was one of the only things that I remembered coming in um, so yeah but it was a good conclusion I'm happy I read it stay tuned for the series review I will try to get that out this month and then I read The Air, which was another book. Dune was from my summer TBR, as was this, and uh, the one most likely to. So I did finally read The Air, which I've owned for a while. And um, <laughs> I gave it three stars. I will also be unhauling this, uh, just because I don't see myself rereading it. I own the original selection trilogy, still like those. I actually do want to reread those. We'll continue to own those. Um, I have already requested the second book from my library through Overdrive, and I'm perfectly content reading it that way. I'm, I more want to read the next book because I care about so many of the other side characters in here than I care about Edlin. Now I knew that going in, a lot of people had issues with her, so I'm not surprised that I also had issues with her. Um, she is just awful. Awful, awful, awful. She's so self-centered. Like, you know how people complain about America? I feel like America at least cared about people, you know? Like, she made stupid decisions, but she did them from, like, a good place. She's just a horrible human being, and 
I don't understand how she was like born. Although, lesson in parenting, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. And I'm hoping she was written this way on purpose and Kira Cass doesn't like endorse this kind of behavior. I don't know. But it was an okay book. I found the other plot, like anything away from like Edlin and her romance to be more interesting than specifically her. Um, so, you know. And then I read Mind Till Midnight by Lisa Kleypas. I've been wanting to reread this series. I haven't reread the, I'm not sure I ever reread the last book in the series. And I used to reread these like a crazy person. And I haven't in a long time. And since I finished The Hathaways, I thought this was a nice uh, follow up to that because uh, the hero in this book, Cam, shows up in the Hathaways books and uh, so of course you get to see like Evie and Sebastian and Lillian and Marcus um, and I believe I'm gonna try and read one of these a month. I may cave and end up reading more than that. And then I want to do a series review of this. And it's so funny because every time I would talk about the wallflowers, people would, oh, like, I would get comments that are like, I love the Hathaways. And I'm like, so do I. <laughs> I so, don't worry, so do I. Um, I gave this five stars. It's not my favorite book in the series from what I can remember, but it's definitely one of, this is a super strong series, though. I think it's my favorite Lisa Clyde series. Um, but this one is great. And it follows Amelia, who is kind of, she is super amazing. She's very strong, independent. She's in a really crappy situation because her brother is like a drunk. She, her parents are dead. She has to take care of all of her siblings, basically. And she's just so focused on that. And she never really has time to focus on herself. And then she meets Cam and he's just like, I'll help you. And she's like, I don't need help. And he's like... I'm not saying you, basically he's like, I'm not saying you need help, but I'm here to help you. And it's like, it's very nice. It's a very well done story where like you don't have to give up autonomy and control by asking for help or by somebody helping you. Um, you know, and it's nice because Cam is a gypsy, so, or a Roma, so it is kind of like a... I feel like interracial might be a little strong, but considering the con the context of this story, interracial is probably the correct term for their relationship. And then I read another book on my summer TBR, which was Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. And I'm gonna be honest with you, for like the first hundred pages of this, I was really scared. I've enjoyed every Morgan Matson book I've read so far, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not really getting this. I'm not really into it. And then something just clicked with me, and I was completely in love with it, and, like, did not want to put it down, <sighs> was obsessed, and, um, I ended up giving five stars. I think it's my second favorite Morgan Matson book. I think Amy Rogers' Epic Detour is just always going to have a special place in my heart, but this is a really, really good book. And while it has a super cute romance in it, I feel like the main point of this book is friendship. And going into it, you think it might be about Emily and Sloane's friendship because Sloane is Emily's best friend and she leaves and leaves this list of things for Emily to do. And it's like about a summer of Emily trying to do those things and try and figure out why Sloane has left her. And it is about their friendship. But it's also about these other friendships she makes, about the friendships between those people, about friendships between... There's so many different kinds of friendships, and that's what I really, really loved about this book. And then the last book I read was an ebook, and that was The Suffragette Scandal by Courtney Milan. And this is the fourth book, yeah, in the Brothers Sinister series. And it follows Free, who is a, she's the sister of one of the Brother Sinister guys, I cannot remember which one right now. And she's like a suffragette, and she's very independent, she runs like a woman's newspaper, and she went to college, and she's very like, progressive and everything. Um, and this book does deal with some serious elements, mostly because there are men trying to like, attack Free. Um, and what she's doing to try and stop her, but it is full of some of the best banter, if not the best banter, I have ever read between two characters. 
and I'm still gonna call it banter I feel like banter sometimes is like slightly negative like can be a little biting which if done properly it's okay but just their dialogue with each other is so perfect and I mean mainly between the hero and the heroine um, but I gave it four stars I did really like it um, I was just a little disappointed by some of the things with the side characters that's it uh, that's why I got four stars instead of five but it was an awesome book so glad I read it so those are the books that I read this month if you've read any of these and have any thoughts feel free to leave them down in the comments below thank you so much for watching Bye.